Welcome back, folks, to World of Warships Legend for the how to play and build your Monta Kakoli Hakalugi. I don't know how to pronounce that, guys. I definitely am not good at uh, enunciations. So, with that being said, <laughs> let's get into uh, the build right away. I really love this line, by the way. We'll talk about it more in the battle and why we do. And there's some common themes in this. Uh, for these, this line, I use Sanzanetti. You can use Mimbelli and uh, uh, and kind of help with some things with that. I have a tendency to go with Sanzanetti. There's a few reasons. Um, but right off the bat here, guys, uh, Beyond Range is the perk I use uh, and uh, Torpedo Range. Now, these two perks here, you're going to change early on your ship. If you, right away, you're not going to have SAP. You're going to have a, uh, HE instead of it. I highly recommend when you get a chance to switch to SAP. We'll talk about that why in the video more. Um, but you might want to go with these two perks here. So you might want to go with Igniter and Punch Through in the very beginning. These do have, especially early on, I feel, good AP in this uh, line. And that would be a good way to start out until you get air SAP. And then you could go with, you definitely want to go with Subtle Manipulations. And you can choose between Home Run or Before It's Too Late. Uh, both of them are good options. I have a tendency to go with the range on the torpedoes just because I have a pretty good idea of where destroyers are kind of at, particularly in the ship. And like I said, we'll talk about that a little bit in the video. Now, this is where at Tier 4 on the Monty Hakalugi, you want to switch to the uh, to fully packed instead of refill station if you do have that. And also, Inspirations, I have Nikolai Kuzinov, which I have on every cruiser, and uh, Membelli for the reload time. These are a little slower on the reload time, even though they're like cruisers yet at this point in the line. Uh, so, real quick, you do get the panic smoke, I, the, the exact smoke. I call it panic smoke because it works out really good. And these catapult fighters, which on this ship are particularly useful and we're going to you, you know we're going to show that in here but when you use your small rolling your your panic smoke uh your exhaust smoke you want to use the catapult fighter it will help spot for you while you are in your smoke um if you want you can use a camo for this uh still at tier four i don't know if i personally would but it does help this thing become super sneaky. For upgrades, you could do the turret traverse. I am a person of dispersion and accuracy. That's always how I play. That's just my play style. I think turret traverse on this thing is going to be good. This has pretty awful turret traverse, especially for a light cruiser. And as you can see, the upgrades now... At the time, I didn't do this, but I personally, my first one I would do if I were you guys is the SEP upgrade. This is very handy. We'll talk about it, like I said in the video. Um, and then the hull upgrade or the range upgrade is the next one I would actually do. Uh, like I said, I played this very early on and I kind of didn't know what I was doing. I was wanting health on this thing and you don't necessarily need that. It's more of a priority to get that range in the SAP on that. And uh, the uh, uh, torpedo upgrade as well. Now, a few things too, really quick as we look here in statistics. Um, this is a ship I played very early on and had a good win rate. Very, very rare for me because when I first started playing this game, I was terrible like all of us we i was absolutely terrible very good main gun accuracy even for back then and you can see again torpedoes again 
you can catch people with good. Uh, anything over 10% on torpedo accuracy for me on a cruiser is pretty good. And people don't expect these torpedoes coming, especially if you're kiting away. Um, you can see my, my stats on to the right. These, while they can be really good on damage, that's not what I use these things. We'll show these off in the battle. And uh, because this is tier 4, I just did the one battle. I don't like being down at tier 3 and 4, trying to get good games for Penny, you know, and cause, because it just feels like I'm ruining other people's games. And to be honest, it kind of feels like Penguin Clubbing. We talk about that uh, a lot in other videos as well. Uh, it has elf. Uh, it's respectable the guns slow reload time for a light cruiser they are the six inches um, the turret traverse is a little better on this ship but still not ideal like i said you could do get that speed up if you wanted i'm a big fan of of more about other things than i am I'm, i would take accuracy over that uh torpedoes very long range for tier four uh in like i said they are slow but they are solid and they do still reload relatively quick and these things for some reason people just don't expect them um uh, aa is about average or or a little above maneuverability <laughs> this thing is an absolute indie car <laughs> For this tier, I feel anyway. It turns well, the rudder ship's good, and it is quick. And you can really catch some stuff off guard. Uh, this is a trait that follows the Italian cruisers pretty much the whole way through, I feel. And uh, this and the concealment are the strongest things about this. 9.2. You could do a concealment build with Mimbelli, make this super sneaky. I think you can get down to like. 7.6 i can't remember exactly i did try it um um that was actually the first build i did back in the day with it um, but i like this build particularly better um and with this smoke one kind of sneaky little stat about this ship guys it's a light cruiser that detectability will firing in smoke very good 4.2 you can really use that to your advantage and I will show that. Uh, we'll talk about that in the, the battle. Armor. This thing, shockingly, has pretty good armor. The one trait about these, though, is the raised citadel, guys. This line all has, seems to have a raised citadel. So if you are not angled, and it does have the armor to, to angle... But if you are not angled with this thing, it will let you know. <laughs> and you will go back to port quickly. But for the most part, like a normal cruiser, you angle, you're going to be just fine. It actually has pretty good belt armor, 60 inches on that belt. So you can angle very well to almost everything. As we go ahead and check the other ships and start this battle... It is disclaimer time. This is a beginner's guide with my opinions on how to play and build this ship to help people who need help. This is not for people who think they already know everything about the game. There isn't just one way to play or build any ship. Also, I am just a above average player, not a perfect player. I make mistakes. You're going to see some in the game. I'm sure of it. Also... I slaughter of beautiful languages as good as anyone. It's almost an art form how great I am at wrecking languages. So prepare yourselves. And with that out of the way, let's start the battle. We're on New Dawn. Um, a very interesting map. Now, I do something with these ships that uh, can be a little risky, but I love doing it, and it pans out very well for me. I'm an aggressive player. Now, I... Probably shouldn't have done this with an aircraft carrier in the match, but what I always do in these Italian on uh, the uh, 
um, the Matahakalugi and the Trento and the Zara in particular is I do a fight or flight thing at the beginning of the match. Um, I will push in right close to the cap. You are not going to get detected. Everything behind you is going to get detected before you with these, you know, really good detectability. So what I do is if it doesn't, if it looks like I'm pretty clear, I'll go in and I'll take the dang cap or I'll catch a destroyer off guard. These things will destroy uh, a destroyer in like seconds. These, I've got more dev strikes in this Italian cruiser line with cruisers on, on, uh, you know, on destroyers than I have with probably every other combined ship in the game. I, I this SAP just loves destroyers. Now here, I want to sit up on this island. I'm spotted by the plane. I do have my plane up. I feel like I'm in an okay spot here. I would prefer to get up a little bit, just a slight bit more. Um, but I'm not super taking a lot of shots right now, so I'm not panicking. I'm not throwing my smoke out just yet. Uh, what I want to do is I want to get this cap. I don't see a lot of people right here in the middle. Uh, in a lot of people, if you can get a B cap, the middle cap, very early on in a match, it can change everything. And you will see that play out in this match. But with this detectability on this ship, and you can see uh, uh, I, it's 9-6 right now. It's actually supposed to be 9-2. I had a wrong camo on for this. Um, but uh, I definitely just came in. Once I got to the where I had like 30 seconds left of my catapult fighter, and of the capture, I did pop my smoke just to make sure I could get this cap. And I'm just kind of being aware of my surroundings here. Now, one thing I noticed uh, is uh, right away, I didn't have much fight here in the center of the cap. And also, I noticed that over at E, we definitely lost that fight over there. It look, or uh, over at C, it looks like we've lost that fight pretty rapidly with most of our guys are in the middle uh, i did tell them to get back a little bit because that cruiser obviously one thing that annoys me in a game people will just try to get into a cap even though it's going to be caught in a sec or you capped in a second so just try to get extra points i get it but sometimes it can be a fatal mistake if you're not in the right ship to do that with that being said, I noticed straight away when I got out of my smoke, I wasn't spotted. So that tells me, uh, it, you know, and I'm I'm pretty much in the clear, and I got to do something to change this battle. We're already losing. We lost two caps. My thought is, I'm pretty close to the aircraft carrier. That aircraft carrier went right to the middle of the cap on me right away. So I know he's probably a decent aircraft carrier probably you know he's got some you know he's at some skill level and i want to go get him because i know he's close by a lot of people at low tiers don't necessarily move right away in the beginning he gets spotted he starts to move i'm shooting ap the problem is is i bounce a couple shots this is uh you know a light cruiser so they aren't always gonna pen obviously even though uh, as you see, a couple bounce there. And I do throw torps. That's another thing about this ship. Is you should be throwing these torps when you get a chance. It catches a lot of people. Uh, when they're not paying attention. Especially if they're chasing you. Um, and you can see I got a citadel there. Even at the angle that he was at. So I decided to stay with uh, AP. Now because a, even a light cruiser like this. Which doesn't almost ever normally overpen um even though that it doesn't normally overpen tier three aircraft carriers have no armor <laughs> so uh you do you just see in a minute you have to be careful with overpenning um on these ships now my my thought is i want to get as much attention away from the caps as i can and and particularly i see we lost c uh, but I want to drag some people out of this fight. If I'm going to go over here, 
take out the carrier. I want to make sure I'm annoying the crap out of the team and pull some people out of the cap. And you can see them torps I threw out three years ago hit the carrier there. Um, and one other thing, too, if you're going in and with that fight or flight where I talk about on, on uh, the Monticello here or Coolio uh, and the Trento and Zara, you can see the carrier go down. So we're kind of even the playing field. We pulled some people out. You'll see in a second we've caught the attention of that whole side of that team. There's four people. Uh, this was a 1v4 fight essentially over here. Um, and I have definitely caused some concern for that team. <laughs> um, but like I said, with these three tiers, and particularly Zara, Trento, and Monaculo, or I just call it Monahakalui because I cannot pronounce these names. Um, I, if you charge in and you don't like what you see, pop your smoke, get out of there. These are fast, they turn well, they get out of there. If there's a destroyer there, you can either catch it off guard quick, which I like to do, or if you don't like the scenario and you feel really outnumbered, pop that smoke and get out of there. That If, if you have torpedoes heading at you, it's heading to where uh, you were going. So if you turn out, you'll be safe normally. With that being said, I definitely have the attention of this Konigsberg over here and uh, the battleship and i believe there's an emily bertier over here as well but i've taken three people out of the main fight and being that they had capped c they could have easily went in the smarter play i feel for these guys would have been go get crossfire on teammates that's not what they did uh they decided to chase me down which is uh, in my book, I that's one of my biggest helps about this ship. That's why I'm not super worried about my damage output in this. I gained a cap in the middle that really helped. And you can see that cap stays R the whole time. So me getting that cap right away won us this game. You'll see later on uh, that that happened. Now, I know I'm really outnumbered here. And... Uh, this armor belt, like I've been saying, if you've been noticing, I'm bouncing these AP rounds off the side here. Uh, and that's, in this German AP, you know, it's German AP, so it's it's a respectable AP. Uh, and this is seems to be a solid player because uh, even though he did come out of his way to track to chase me, he is, you'll see, switching between HE after he realizes he's bouncing shells. Now he starts to do, uh, he kind of pulls himself out a little bit there. So I thought maybe I'd get him with uh, AP. Um, I'm waiting for him to make a mistake. As you can see, I am doing um, the, uh, I call it the butt wiggle. <laughs> so that I can get my guns on him temporarily and then shift back. I am not concerned in the slightest about that battleship. I know he's going to hit me a little bit. But I can tell you, these are the one cruisers that... Battleships do not scare me at all. With this rudder shift on these things, you can make battleships look like absolute fools. Now, the one thing I expected here, in, in as I get my smoke, I pop my smoke because I want to come out and get this guy when he's not paying attention. I figure it's later in the match. He probably doesn't have his sonars anymore. And that is one misplay that I have. And you see I got two... Uh, target hits on him or two uh, floodings as well so I've hit three torpedoes in this match just randomly essentially throwing them out there so make sure you're doing that so I finally get turned broadside and I'm thinking if I can keep getting turned I'm in a good spot here but I get caught and uh, uh, you know this Konigsberg had full health at the start of the match I did get him down pretty good obviously um, but uh, you can see, you know, there was just too many people for me, um, but I did, you know, whittle him down quite a bit and uh, get him to, even though I didn't have as much help to start it, we did do pretty well there. Now I'm just going to speed up the end of the mat bat match, but you can see me capping B in the beginning was a very uh, crucial part, and basically they just wander around the score stays relatively close but because we have the two cap 
to their one. We end up winning, and our Konigs stays alive. Um, anyway, I love this ship line. I just absolutely love this ship line. It might be one of my favorite lines to play. Probably my favorite cruiser line. Um, and we have a pretty decent game here. Anyway, you guys have a wonderful day. And I will see you next time, folks. Have a good one. <laughs>